Oh, God, I really don't. I, don't, I think this is an awful intro. Uh, oh, dang. My e-bike broke down, and I'm going to have to ride without the e. It's a good thing it's a bike. I guess a notable detail that I don't hear is the description of what it's like to ride an e-bike with no power. As in, it's turned off, or you're in pedal assist zero, saving some battery, getting some exercise. If you're riding in pedal assist one, you can be tricked into thinking that you're doing most of the work. But really, the motor is offsetting all the extra e-bike weight and making it feel like you have an extremely high performing bike. It's very transparent to the point where when you turn off the pedal assist, riding feels very heavy, like you need to put air in your tires. Even going down hills feels kind of heavy when you're pedaling. So it's really not ideal, but if you had to, you could downshift and pull it off. And that's where having that regular bike gearing is worthwhile. I guess I'm talking about an e-bike conversion kit where you take a 21 speed and turn it into an e-bike. It's kind of redundant to have that many gears on an e-bike, really. I think you can get by with using a single speed bike, but having something like a six speed gives you a wider range of pedal input. Especially going up hills, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for in a bike. How much power it has, how much range, how much exercise you want to get every time you use it. But would I design a bike for riding during electrical failure at the expense of performance when riding it as an e-bike? No. I wouldn't. <laughs> I would just accept that if it failed, I would downshift to first gear, and either way, I'm probably going to be pushing it up hills. I mean, it's all about weight. You can get a small motor and a small battery, and it will be easier. So this is like 80 pounds, 1000 watt motor, 20 amp hour battery. It was probably 40 pounds at most before I made it an e-bike, so you can convert a lighter bike with a 500 watt motor and a 10 amp hour battery and it would definitely be lighter and perform better as a bike or you could buy a pre-made e-bike. The point is there are advantages to having less power and I've said it before and I'm saying again if you run out of battery power at least on my bike the bike doesn't just die it'll cut out for like 20 seconds and then power will be on for 10 seconds and you'll be like, please, can I just make it home like this? But it's not even that bad, because if you drop your pedal assist down to one, it'll be able to maintain that lower current draw compared to if you were in pedal assist five. So dropping down to pedal assist one is like having a reserve tank on your e-bike. Yeah, I guess another thing, just a note on this, that, you know, with an e-bike, you tend to not stand up when pedaling. Again, heavy bike with more power, more battery, is different than a light bike. And when you add a bunch of weight, it messes with the balance. More so with front wheel drive because it affects steering. That's why you don't see a lot of baskets on bikes anytime outside of the 1950s, because it was a bad idea. But one way to get extra power and reduce fatigue with riding is to stand up. When you have to pedal, it feels wobbly. So that would be something that would make it harder to ride with no power. If you come into e-bikes from biking, then you might know that it's just about pacing yourself. You should be able to ride for hours if you have enough water and you don't push it too hard. But if you're coming at this from never doing any long distance biking, the idea of having to do 10 miles on an impaired bike could ruin your day. You're going to be super late. You're going to have to stop and take breaks. You're probably going to run out of water. I mean, I had a flat tire with no tools, no spare, and I had to literally rip the tube out of the rim because it kept bunching up. It's like we live in a world of overconvenience to the point where nothing is allowed to fail. Like, if you see someone broken down on the side of the road, there's this judgment thing. Like, what did they do wrong that caused them to get stuck there? Like, it's their fault for not doing maintenance or not having a better car. But go back to the 1950s and cars were breaking down every day. That's just the way it was. And people help people instead of judging them. I don't know, am I being too much of a millennial, stressing out about the obligations of my own time and having nostalgia for a time period that I was never even a part of? Is it just me? I mean, really, it's like you've got 20 things to do in a day, and if something goes wrong, the rest of your day is screwed, and then the next day, now you've got 40 things to do. Before you know it, you're perpetually 10 years behind where you think you should be in life, and everyone's calling you a failure, not with their words, but with their eyes. 
And you're like, what did I do wrong? I try so hard all the time. Am I just dumb? A subpar human being? Or is my biggest mistake buying into this hustle? And the better way of living is just to exist and not view life as a competition to be the best one at getting things done. So bring a toolkit so you can fix things on the side of the road. If you built your bike, it's easy to know what tools you used, but bring extra fuses, Allen wrenches, and regular wrenches. Remember to turn off your battery before you check any connections, right? You're like, what's going on? I have no power. You get off and grab an exposed wire. Boom, 48 volts, 30 amps. You just got electrocuted.